Tuwapewe sifa uh, Tumishangile buwana kwa makofi Tunaweza kukaa tafadhali Tunaweza kukaa Asanteni praise and worship Mungu wetu awabariki um, Ningependa tufululize kwa neno Na namini ya kwamba mungu wetu Ata to Bariki. Uh, could you turn with me in the book of uh, Proverbs, chapter nineteen? Fungua pamoja nami katika kitabu cha cha midali mlango akumi na tisa. Proverbs chapter nineteen. Midali akumi na tisa. You remember last week we were looking at uh, prayer and fasting. Kumbuka wiki iliyopita tulijifunza juu ya kuomba na kufunga and we saw the importance of praying and worshiping and also fasting. Na tukajifunza umuhimu wa kuomba, kuabudu na pia kufunga. And if there is any problem that there is and it has been a, a weak link is in the area of fasting. Na kama kuna kitu ambacho kimekuwa ni unyonge mwingi katika maisha ya Ukristo ni katika eneo la kufunga. My dear brothers and sisters, may I appeal to you in the name of Jesus that we need to pray and we need to fast. Ndugu na dada ninawaomba katika jina la Yesu tunahitaji kuomba na kufunga. Amen. Today I want us to look at something else. Leo ningependa tujifunze kitu tofauti and uh, I want to look at uh, the issue of family. Ningependa tujifunze juu ya jamii. Of late we've had a lot of deaths. Tumekuwa tukisikia juu ya vifo vingi. And uh, it is uh, these are deaths that have been occurring within the family lineage. Na ni vifo ambavyo vimekuwa vikitendeka katika jamii. Father killing the wife, the wife killing the husband and the children killing the parents. Mume anamuua mke wake, watoto wanaua wazazi. It has been terrible. Imekuwa mbaya. It's as if the devil has just unlocked all the wicked evils to come into families. Ni kama shetani yamefungulia uovu wote katika jamii. I want us to look at the families. Ningependa tuangalie jamii. But I want us to press on especially in the areas of children. Lakini sana sana ningependa tutazame lile eneo la watoto. I want to tell us kuambieni, that uh, Eli, Eli he worked alongside his children. Alifanya kazi pamoja na watoto wake. Prophet Samuel, Nabi Samuel he had also a, a child. Alikuwa pia na mwana. But uh, this particular child did not walk in the ways of the Lord. Lakini huyu mtoto wake hakutembea katika njia za Mungu. We have so many and so forth. Tuna wengi. When you come to the New Testament, unapoingia katika agano jipya, you'd look at the families. Unapotazama familia, jamii, and uh, you'd be patab. Utashangaa. Because it is clear in the Bible Ni kwa sababu iko wazi katika Biblia that John and James were brothers Yohana na Yakobo walikuwa ni mandugu Peter and Andrew were brothers Petero na Andrea walikuwa pia ni mandugu Another James and and Alphaeus were brothers Yakobo na mwingine aliyeitwa Alphaea pia walikuwa ni wandugu You can see the family segment Unaona ile sehemu ya familia. God would want to use our families. Mungu angependa kutumia familia zetu. It is not in the will of God that our children are walking a wire. Sio mapenzi ya Mungu kwamba watoto wetu waweze kupotoka. But rather we need to walk in the likeness of our God. Lakini Mungu angependa tuenende katika njia zake. When God did the creation Wakati Mungu alifanya kazi ya umbaji day, siku ya sita, he created Adam and Eve. Alimuumba Adamu na Eva. A family setup. Familia. 
families were not begun by the universities. Familia hazikuanzishwa na chuo kikuu. The one who instituted the family is none other than our God. Aliye mwanzilishi wa jamii ni Mungu mwenyewe. And therefore when we come to the family setup, na kwa hivyo tunapoangalia ile hali ya familia, we need to have the mind of God. Tunastahili tuwe na ule mtazamo wa Mungu. We need to know what is the map that we need to follow. Tunastahili tujue tunafaa kufuata muongozo upi. Where is this map? Muongozo uko wapi? It is found in the Bible. Unapatikana katika Biblia. Whenever you get children, unapopata watoto, it is not because of your effort of producing children. Sio kwa sababu ya bidii yako ya kupata watoto. The Bible puts it very clearly that it is uh, the gift that God gives to us. Biblia inasema wazi ya kwamba ni kipawa ambacho Mungu anatupatia. So if God has given you a gift, kwa hivyo kama Mungu amekupa kipawa, you need to know how to take care of it. Ni vyema ujue jinsi ya kukitunza. It is important. Ni ya muhimu. I want us to read uh, from Proverbs chapter 19 and verse number 18. Ningependa tusome Mithali 19 mstari wa 18. Proverbs 18:19. Mithali 19 mstari wa 18. Listen to what the Bible Sikiza neno la Mungu. Chasten your son while there is hope. And do not set your heart on his destruction. Biblia inasema ya kwamba mrudi mwanao kwa maana liko tumaini wala usikaze nafsi yako kwa kuangamia kwake. You need to discipline or chasten your child Unastahili kumpatia mtoto wako ni dhamu while there is hope wakati bado kuna tumaini and do not desire for his death na pia usiwe unatazamia kuangamia kwake sometimes we have left the aspect of chastening or disciplining our children wakati mwingi tumeacha ile hali ya kuwapatia watoto ni dhamu They say a child inasemekana ya kwamba mtoto is from 9 months ni kuanzia miezi tisa to 11 years hadi miaka 11 and then this particular child will grow to adolescent stage alafu kutoka hapo atakuwa aanze kuwa kijana from 13 kuanzia miaka 13 up to 19 hadi 19 that is the teen age hiyo ndio miaka ile ya kijana oh, chipukizi yeah. Ama barubaru. Now it, it is from 20 years ni kuanzia miaka 20 that this particular child now is going to adulthood. Huyu huyu mtoto sasa atakuwa mtu mzima. He is growing now towards adulthood. Ataelekea kuwa mtu mzima. But now I want us to look at the child. Lakini sasa ningependa tuangalie mtoto from 9 months kuanzia miezi 9 to 11 years. Hadi 11 from day 1 up to 9 months kuanzia siku ya kwanza hadi miezi tisa, we would call this child an uh, infant utamuita huyu mtoto mchanga but from 9 months lakini kuanzia miezi tisa, this particular child has now known certain things huyu mtoto sasa ameanza kuelewa mambo fulani to those mothers who are breastfeeding kwa sababu wa mama ambao wananyonyesha When the child reaches 9 uh, months, mtoto anapofika miezi tisa, sometimes the child would want to bite the breast of the mother. Huyo mtoto anaweza taka kumuuma mama yake anaponyonya. And the mother can spank the child. Na huyo mama atamchapa mtoto. Because the child has now started developing ni kwa sababu huyo mtoto ameanza kukua to an age of understanding amefikia kile kiwango cha kuelewa and when you cuddle and you pamper this child unapomshika na kumbembeleza huyu mtoto without telling the child the truth bila kumwambia ukweli the child will walk in very weird ways huyo mtoto ataenenda kwa njia zilizopotoka and that's why the bible is telling us here ndio kwa sababu biblia inatuambia hapa discipline chasten your child while there is hope mrudi mwanao kwa maana liko tumaini you can turn a child when the child is still tender 
unaweza kumtengeneza mtoto wakati angali mchanga but when the child will grow to a certain measure whereby he will start hardening himself to certain things it will be very hard lakini atakapokomaa afikie kiwango kingine ataanza kuwa amezoea mambo mengine na itakuwa ngumu sana and therefore as soon as you discover corrupt disposition of uh, certain attitudes in this child kwa hivyo mara tu unapotambua tabia katika tabia mbaya katika huyu mtoto start correcting the child anza kumrekebisha kum don't spare the child usikose kumrekebisha don't spare Usi, the child usikose kumrekebisha disciplining is the word of god kupatia mtoto ni dhamu ni neno la mungu and he's the one who instituted marriage na yeye Mungu ndiye mwanzilishi wa ndoa. You are not better knowledgeable than God who instituted the We, order of marriage. Wewe hauwezi kuwa unaelewa ndoa sana kuliko yeye alianzisha ndoa. So don't go with the, the some high uh, you know understanding of some individuals who are not basing their ideas from the word of God. Kwa hivyo wewe usifuate mawazo ya watu wengine ambao hawafuati neno la Mungu. Another thing that I want to say Jambo lingine ningependa kusema Some parents do not want to take responsibility Wazazi wengine hawataki kuchukua majukumu yao How many of us are parents here Wangapi wetu hapa ni wazazi It is important for you to know you are a parent Kama wewe ni mzazi inua mkono Ah usiweke nusu mringoti nyanyua mkono wako juu Inua kabisa juu Amen 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 I'm speaking to the right people kwa hivyo ninazungumzia watu ambao wanaelewa. And who are the candidates of being parents? Who are the candidates? Ni wangapi wanangojea kuwa wazazi? Who are, who are the parents? Oh, anybody who is not married uh, is a candidate for marriage. Mtu yeyote ambaye hajaolewa yuko tayari kuolewa. Uh, footballers in the house. Uh, Tuna wacheza, uh, wachezaji mahali hapa. Yes, yes, Amen. yes. Some of us it seems as if they don't want to get married. Eh? Wengine ni kama hawataki kuingia katika ndoa. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to highlight something here. Ningependa kuzungumzia kuhusu jambo hapa. Discipline of children ni dhamu ya watoto is central to God's expectation. Inaambatana na yale matarajio ya Mungu. Disciplining of children kuwapatia watoto ni dhamu is central to God's expectation of parents. Inaambatana na yale matarajio ya Mungu kama sisi kwetu sisi wazazi. God expects you and me. Mungu anatarajia wewe na mimi. Probably now you don't have you know infants, you don't have children. Pengine hauna watoto wakati huu in terms of 9 months to 11 years. Ambao labda wako kuanzia miezi tisa hadi 11. It doesn't matter. Haijalishi. You can still have that knowledge and help somebody. Unaweza kuwa na hayo ma Unaweza kuwa na hiyo hali ya kuelewa na usaidie wengine. Probably in the near future you are going to be a grandpa. Le, labda wakati ujao utakuwa ni nyanya ama or, babu. Or a grandma. Mm. You see you are going to help uh, um, your children or uh, that relative of yours. Utasaidia watoto wako ama watu wenu wa jamii. So disciplining I just wanted to instill that so that you may understand disciplining of children is uh, mandatory. Kwa hivyo ningependa tuelewe ya kwamba kuwapatia watoto ni dhamu ni ya lazima. I want us to look at uh, the goals of discipline. Ningependa tuangalie yale the goals of discipline malengo malengo ya nidhamu we, we are not just disciplining for the sake of doing it hatupatiani nidhamu tu bila sababu but we want to know some of the goals lakini tungependa kujua malengo fulani what are some of the purposes ile makusudio what is the end result je yale matarajio it is paramount that we understand this ni vyema tuweze kuelewa haya so the goals of discipline Malengo ya nidhamu. Goal number one, ya kwanza submission to authority. Ni ile hali ya kujisalimisha kwa mamlaka. Submission to authority. Kujisalimisha kwa mamlaka. Goal number two, ya pili self control. Ni ile hali ya kuwa na mm, ki, kiasi. Self control. Kuwa na kiasi. 
That is a goal number two. Hilo ndilo lengo la pili. Another goal number three. Lengo la tatu is wisdom and life skills. Ni ile hali ya kuwa na hekima na mambo ya kujisaidia katika kimaisha. Wisdom and life skills. Hekima na hali ya kujisaidia katika kimaisha. And so these are the purposes as to why we discipline our children. Kwa hivyo haya ndio malengo ya kutufanya tuwapatie watoto nidhamu. I will talk about discipline later on. Nitazungumzia juu ya nidhamu baadaye. Maybe next week or something. Labda wiki nyingine. But this week we want to prepare ourselves because our children are coming back from school. Lakini wiki hii ningependa tujiandae ni kwa sababu watoto wanarejea kutoka shuleni. They will be with us in the house. Watakuwa pamoja nasi nyumbani. Don't volleyball your child to Sunday school. Tusisukumie watoto wetu tu kuja Sunday school. Do not volleyball them. Tusiwarushe. Yes. Eh. You you don't volleyball your children to Sunday school teachers. Tusiwarushie walimu wa Sunday school watoto wetu. That are our watoto sijui na kama gani sijui mwalimu anawafundisha na magani. Come on. That is not the truth. Hiyo sio kweli. The man is the head of the family. Mwanamume ndiyo kichwa cha jamii. And it is so not because you have earned it. Na sio ni kwa sababu umeifanyia kazi. La. But it's because God has chosen to give you. It is a delegated responsibility. Lakini ni kwa sababu Mungu amekupatia hayo majukumu. And so men we need to wake up. Kwa hivyo wanaume tunastahili tuamke. Husbands we need to wake up. Wanaume tunastahili tuamke. Did you realize? Sijui kama umetambua that uh, the government has made a lot of emphasis serikali imetilia mkazo sana on the girl child katika hali ya kumuelimisha mtoto msichana the, girl, the, the boy child has been left aside lakini kijana amewachwa and as we grow na tunapoendelea kukua with that timidity na ule hali ile hali ya uoga when we grow and are as fire into some other areas na tunapokuwa katika maeneo mengine kind of a mentality yale mawazo tends to have a part in our being yanakuwa katika maisha yetu when you go to school unapoenda shuleni right now sasa hivi can give you a test so you can just go and see unaweza end uangalie that the people who are singing wale ambao wanaimba they are girls ni wasichana The boys tend to hide behind. Vijana huwa wanajificha kule nyuma. They are not enthusiastic. Hawana ile ka, ile bidii. The people who can do poems. Wale ambao wanaweza jisimama na kujieleza. And they are willing to sing, do poems and uh, and act. Wao ambao wanaweza sema mashairi na pia wafanya ile michezo. Are girls. Ni wasichana. But the boys. Lakini vijana are hiding. Wanajificha. Men, I want us to wake up. Wanaume ningependa tusimame. I really want us to wake up. Ningependa tuamke. In the areas of our leadership. Katika maeneo ya uongozi. That we as men kama sisi wanaume need to rise tunastahili tuinuke because that is a delegated authority ni kwa sababu hayo ni majukumu ambayo tumepewa there is a delegated responsibility hayo ni majukumu ambayo tumepewa that we need to acquire and act on it kwamba tunastahili tusimame na tufanye kazi that's why you'll find men are timid in the home ndio kwa sababu utawapata ya kwamba wanaume hawana nguvu katika nyumba zao. There are a lot of things that are happening within the homestead. Kuna mambo mengi yanayoendelea katika jamii. It is my prayer men let us stand. Ni ombi langu kwamba wanaume tutainuka. Now we said the goals of uh, discipline. Tumesema ya kwamba malengo ya nidhamu goal number one ya kwanza is, is submission to authority. Ni hali ya kujitoa kwenye mamlaka. Submission to authority hali ya kujisalimisha kwenye mamlaka is a, a very vital component in the home ni jambo la muhimu sana katika familia it first and foremost starts in the home kwanza kabisa inaanza kwenye pale nyumbani and then it will go further alafu itaendelea go to the church inakuja kanisani It will go to the school inaenda shuleni it will go even to the wider perspective of the world itaenda pia mbali kwenye ulimwengu 
It will go to the community. Itaingia pia kwenye jamii zetu. And different areas. Na katika maeneo tofauti. And therefore submission is very key. Kwa hivyo hali ya kujisalimisha kwenye mamlaka ni ya maana sana. But I want us to look at the foundation of submission. Lakini ningependa tuangalie msingi wa ile hali ya kujisalimisha. They are laid in the home. Inawekwa kwenye jamii. We need to know where to start from. Tunastahili tujue tunaanzia wapi. It begins from the home. Inaanza pale nyumbani. Any submission. Hali ya ile hali ya kujisalimisha or kujinyenyekesha. Kujinyenyekesha. It starts from home. Inaanza nyumbani. And you know with a child, na unajua kama mtoto, a child observes. Mtoto huwa anatazama not only what you are telling him sio, or her, sio kile tu unamwambia but he wants to see your lifestyle lakini anataka kuona jinsi unavyoishi really what you are saying is it that you what you that's the same that you that that with that which you are saying anataka kuona kama kile unachosema hivyo ndivyo unavyoishi are you also doing it je unafanya hivyo are you living it unaishi hivyo and so those are key factors that we need to understand kwa hivyo hayo ni mambo ya muhimu ambayo tunastahili tuelewe Sometimes you may not know wakati mwingine huenda usijue that, that the child is seeing you kwamba mtoto anakuona that the child is mimicking you kwamba mtoto anafanya vile unavyofanya the child is very observant mtoto huwa anatazama sana and he sees the things that you may not think that this child has noticed anaona mambo ambayo pengine unadhani hakuona first is that it has to be taught submission kwanza ni lazima hali ya unyenyekevu ifunzwe it will be taught in the home inafunzwa pale nyumbani you want to see how submissive you are Unataka ukitaka kujua jinsi ulivyo mnyenyekevu daddy and mommy kati ya mama na baba as a wife kama mke how are you doing things unafanya mambo vipi in the area of submission katika hali ya unyenyekevu do you submit to your husband je unanyenyekea kwa mume wako with a lot of enthusiasm ukiwa na ule moyo mkuu or are you submitting to your husband ama unanyenyekea kwa mume wako reluctantly ukiwa na ile hali ya shingo upande ukiwa na shingo upande reluctantly ukiwa na shingo upande how do you submit unajinyenyekesha kwa njia gani hey mama hey mama do you manipulate your husband? Je, unamtumia mume wako vibaya? You think you are not sowing. Unadhani ya kwamba haupandi? You are sowing. Unapanda. And pretty soon you will reap it. Na hivi karibuni utavuna. It is my prayer. Ni ombi langu that we may understand that there are people seeing us. Kwamba tukaweze kuelewa kuna watu ambao wanatutazama. Are we are in the business of instilling the right things to our children? Na tuko na majukumu ya kuwafundisha watoto wetu mambo yaliyo sawa. About daddy, how is he behaving? Je, naye baba anafanya nini? Does he really show that he loves God? Je, anaonyesha ya kwamba anampenda Mungu? How is he relating with mama? Anahusianaje na mama? Is the house that you are living in is an army camp? Je, pale nyumbani ni kambi ya jeshi? Go there, come here. Baby, baby. Mama, unajifanyaje? and even abusive words na pia tunatumia maneno ambayo ni ya kutukana how are you behaving in the home je una tabia gani pale nyumbani mzee some parents they don't care they even backbite other people in the presence 
of the children. Watu wengine hawajali wanawasengenya watu wengine hata mbele ya watoto. You think they don't know. Unadhania ya kwamba hawajui. They know. Wanajua. And let me tell you. Na wacha nikwambie. You are fixing poison inside the hearts of your children. Wewe unaweka sumu ndani ya mioyo ya watoto wako. You will start blaming others. Utaanza kuwalaumu no, watu wengine. No no, no 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 it is you. La usiwalaumu watu wengine ni wewe mwenyewe. You backbite even other ladies around. Unawasengenya watu wengine. Hii kione hii alikuwa anajifanya hii and you are saying that in the presence of your children. Unasema hayo yote mbele ya watoto wako. What are you instilling in them? Unaweka kitu gani ndani yao? Can you have at least some patience? Si uwe tu na ile hali ya kuvumilia. Can you have even a little understanding? Uwe tu na ile hali ya kuelewa. Can you have uh, some wisdom? Uwe na hekima. Not everything that you speak is uh, the gospel truth. Sio kila kitu ambacho unasema ni kweli. My dear brothers and sisters. Ndugu na dada. Submission to the authority. Hali ya unyenyekevu kwa mamlaka. Submission to the authority. Unyenyekevu kwa mamlaka. The way you are going to submit mzee to God and the way you are going to talk with your wife will mean a lot to your children. Jinsi utakavyojijenyekesha mbele za Mungu na vile utakavyohusiana na mke wako inamaanisha sana mbele za Mungu. In other words we want to model we want to model a certain lifestyle. Kwa maneno mengine ningependa tutengeneze maisha fulani. We want to model. Tungependa kuwa na maisha fulani. Tuwe na maisha ambayo yana kielelezo. We want to model tuwe na kielelezo the things that we do at home mambo ambayo tunafanya pale nyumbani and then they will be seen as we come to the church halafu pia yataonekana tunapokuja kanisani say that the child of so and so watasema mtoto wa mtu fulani as respect ana heshima listen church sikizeni kanisa i said and i'm still saying I've always said and I'm still saying Nimesema kila wakati na pia nitaendelea kusema that Sunday school kwamba shule ya Jumapili the inception of Sunday school ile hali ya kuanzisha kwa shule ya Jumapili the real purpose ile makusudio yake it was so that the children that are coming from pagan family ilikuwa ili watoto wanaotoka katika jamii ambazo hawamjui Mungu should be fed the word of god wakaweze kufunzwa neno la Mungu the children watoto that are coming from the pagan families wanaotoka katika jamii zisizomjua Mungu they should be taught the word of god wakaweze kufunzwa neno la Mungu but the children that are coming from our loins lakini watoto ambao sisi tumewazaa they we have the mandate to teach them the word of god tuna majukumu ya kuwafunza neno la mungu and you cannot evade that na hiyo hauwezi kuepuka it is your responsibility hayo ni majukumu yako you find a child gets food and starts to swallow unaona mtoto anapopewa chakula na anaanza kumeza and when the parents see that the pastor is there wewe unajifanya si nimekuambia uwe unaomba kabla uja Come on, you are you are telling us a lie. Unatuambia uongo. If this child you are train the child in a godly manner, the child will pray by himself or herself. Ukimfunza huyu mtoto njia za Mungu, yeye mwenyewe ataweza kuomba. I told you I went to a certain family. I've always said this. Nimesema haya kila wakati. We were with my wife. Tulikuwa na mke wangu. And uh, The mother went to bring some uh, tea. Mama akaenda kuleta chai. The first thing she brought was uh, a loaf of bread. Kwanza akaleta mkate. And the child came from outside. Na huyu mtoto akatoka akaingia kutoka nje. He looked at the kitchen. Akatazama jikoni. He looked at also this other side. Akaangalia upande ule mwingine. The child grabbed the bread. Huyo mtoto akanyakua mkate. Just a piece of bread. Akachukua kipande cha mkate. And took off. Na akatoka mbio. 
this lady thought we were very angry we are the ones who have consumed huyu mama kadhania labda tulikuwa na njaa sana tukakula mkate kumbe the child has begun to be a thief in the house kumbe mtoto huyu alianza kuwa mwizi pale nyumbani in the house hapo kwao No wonder mama you cannot leave even some coins on the table. Na ndio kwa sababu unapata ya kwamba hauwezi kuacha hata shilingi pale mezani. It will fly. Itaondoka. And you know very well and you are doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Unajua kabisa hiyo inatendeka na hakuna kitu ambacho unafanya. Remember I told you a child of 9 months. Kumbuka niliwaambia mtoto wa miezi tisa knows how to bite the breast of the mother. Anajua kumuuma mama yake anaponyonya. And the child knows that that is wrong. Na anajua ni vibaya. And sometimes the child is spanked. Na wakati mwingine anachapwa. Because he has now developed to a point of now knowing what is wrong and what is good. Ni kwa sababu sasa amefika kiwango cha kujua kilicho sawa na kile ambacho si sawa. Brethren, it is my prayer. Wapendwa ni ombi langu to be very observant what is it that uh, i am living behind kwamba tuwe waangalifu sana ni nini hicho ambacho tunaacha nyuma what is it ni nini hiyo god forbid that you die but i am assuming you will die mungu atusaidie sana tusife lakini tutakufa tu what are the three most important things that you want to live behind ni mambo mangapi hayo matatu ambayo ungependa kuacha nyuma assuming you will go tuseme kama utaenda what are the three important things that you want to leave behind ni mambo yapi hayo muhimu matatu ungependa kuacha nyuma think about it hebu wazia hiyo don't rush into it usikimbie kuwazia think about it wazia hayo so church in a nutshell can we just stand with your bible and pens down kwa hivyo kanisa Ningependa tu kuwauliza tuweze kusimama. Let's, let's, let's turn. Let's Tusi, turn. Tusimame tu. Let's turn. Tusimame. Yes, yesterday I was in the field seeing our young people here jana play ni, football. Jana nilienda uwanjani kuona vijana hawa wakicheza mpira. I was so happy. I was there. I don't know whether you were told, but Nil, I was there. Nilikuwa was pale. So Sijui kama waliambiwa. Amen. Amen. I was so happy. Nilifurahi sana. And they were really playing. Na walicheza kabisa. And they managed to edge those people 1-0. Na wakawashinda wale moja kwa, kwa, kwa bila. Amen. Amen. I want us to do some exercise. Ningependa tufanye mazoezi fulani. In, in football we do a lot of exercises. Ebo 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 fanya fanya exercise. Kabisa kabisa. Na napendezwa na vile Aaron anafanya, Aaron anafanya hivi. <laughs> Attention. Where where is that tension? Let me stand here. Where is that tension? At ease and at ease. Yes, at ease. Attention. Is this way. Ah. Tizi again. Tizi, tizi, tizi. Tizi, tizi. Tizi, tizi. Hands on your chest. Tizi, 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 tizi. Tizi. Tizi, tizi, enda sana. Unajua uliko ume umekauka. Tizi. Tizi. Hands on your neck. Tunaweza kukaa. When I said hands on your chest na mimi nilikuwa sijini na salute watu walinifuata ku salute sio kuweka kwa chest it is not what you say sio kile ambacho unasema it is what you do ni kile unachofanya bwana yesu apewe sifa amen it is what you do that matters ni kile unachofanya ambacho kinajalisha and if you can put in what you say and what you do If they can go together that will be fantastic. Na kama kile ambacho unasema kinaambatana na kile unachofanya hiyo itakuwa sawa. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I want to wind up. Kwa sababu ningependa kumaliza. I want to say this. Ningependa kusema hivi. Revisit your lifestyle. Tazama tena ma- maisha yako. What model are you giving because that is the basis 
of our submission. Je, unatoa mfano gani ni kwa sababu hicho ndicho kinajalisha sana katika hali ya kunyenyekea kwetu? Missions begins at home. Unyenyekevu unaanza nyumbani. Are you manipulative? Je, unatumia watu vibaya? What are you doing? Unafanya nini? What is it that you are leaving behind? Ni nini unachowacha nyuma? I want to touch something here. Ningependa kusema kitu hapa. As we submit, tunaponyenyekea, we have our responsibilities. Tuna majukumu yetu. And our responsibility, na majukumu yetu is to instruct our children. Ni hali ya kuwapatia watoto wetu maagizo. Parents, wazazi, we are to instruct our children. Ni lazima tuwapatie watoto wetu maagizo. What does the Bible say in uh, Ephesians chapter 6? Biblia inasema nini katika Waefeso 6? Ephesians chapter 6. Waefeso 6. When you look at verse number 4, unapoangalia mstari wa 4, what does it say? And you fathers, fathers mwe alert, mwe awake. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Mstari wa nne wa Efeso 6, Biblia inasema, Nanyi akina baba, msi wachokoze watoto wenu, basi waleeni katika adabu na maonyo ya mungu, ya buwana. There the word that is used training neno ambalo linatumiwa hapo ya la kuwa ya kuwafundisha it is to instruct ni ile hali ya kuwapatia maagizo it is to instruct ni kuwafundisha fathers besides giving your children matumbo na sukuma wiki wazazi kando na kuwapatia watoto chakula you need to have some knowledge on how you are going to instruct your children. Ni vizuri upate hekima ya kujua jinsi ya kuwafundisha watoto wako. To instruct, it means to inculcate. Hali ya kufundisha, ni ile hali ya kutia mafundisho fulani. You are making a lot of uh, repetition of the message. Unakuwa na ile hali ya kurudia maagizo fulani. You are making a lot of emphasis. Unatilia mkazo. In calculation would help the child. You are not only going to speak only one word today and you leave it. You have to make some emphasis. Hayo maagizo ita, itasaidia mtoto. Sio siku moja tu. Lakini ni lazima utilie mkazo. So it is important uh, my dear brothers and sisters, Kwa hivyo ni muhimu ndugu na dada, that you know how to instruct. Ukaweze kujua jinsi ya kumpatia mtoto wako maagizo. There is something that you will continue uh, repeating. Ni kitu ambacho utaendelea ukirudia. It is a perpetual thing. Ni kitu cha kufundisha kila wakati. You will keep on. Unaendelea. The teachers, they tell me. Walimu wananiambia. The teachers. Walimu wananiambia that you don't teach a child only by so saying I have taught them. Haufundishi au mtoto tu kwa kumwambia kwamba nimekufunza. But rather you teach a child until the child comes to understanding. Walakini unamfunza mtoto hadi anapata kuelewa. Don't say how many times you have taught that child. Usiseme ni mara ngapi umemfunza mtoto. It is important for us as fathers as the head of the home. Ni vizuri kama akina baba ambao ni vichwa katika jamii. And my problem is this. Na shida yangu ni hii. If the father is not closer with God. Kama baba hajamkaribia Mungu. How will he have knowledge of teaching the children? Atapata vipi maarifa ya kumfunza mtoto? You hardly have time for God. Hauna muda na Mungu. You don't come to Bible study. Hauji katika kujifunza you Biblia. You have 101 excuses. Una vijisababu karibu 100. How will you be knowledgeable in teaching or in instilling some principle in your child? Utapataje hekima ya kumfundisha watoto wako? Utapataje hekima ya kuwafundisha watoto? 
the more we come closer to God the more we go to seminars and conferences and Bible study it is the more we get knowledge God gets closer Mungu anatukaribia into our lives katika maisha yetu and he gives us knowledge on how to build and train and teach our children na anatupatia maarifa jinsi ya kuwafunza watoto wetu bwana yesu apewe sifa amen bwana asifiwe amen sometimes we like caning the children wakati mwingi tunapenda kuwachapa watoto if you do it so much ukifanya sana you are abusing that child utakuwa unamkosea huyo mtoto but if you are training the child lakini kama unamfunza huyo mtoto point that you reach the child hadi wakati ambapo unaweza kumfikia the child will learn huyo mtoto atajifunza it is sad inasikitisha that most men they don't know even what to train or what to teach or instruct their children kwamba wanaume wengi hawajui nini cha kufunza watoto wala jinsi ya kuwafundisha watoto what does the bible say as i wind up Biblia inasema nini ninapomalizia? In Proverbs 22 and verse number 6. Katika Mithali 22 mstari wa 20 na mstari wa 6. Mithali Proverbs 22 and verse number 6. Mithali 22 mstari wa 6. What does the Bible say? Biblia inasema nini? Train up a child the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Biblia inasema mlee mtoto katika njia impasayo naye hata iacha hata atakapokuwa mzee. Uh, I am over 60 something years. Sasa nimefika zaidi ya miaka 60. I grew up from Sunday school. Nimekuwa kutoka shule ile ya Biblia shule ya Jumapili. My parents were asking me questions every Sunday. Wazazi wangu walikuwa wananiuliza maswali kila Jumapili. What did you learn? Ulijifunza nini? Which scripture did you recite? Ulisoma ma- maandiko yapi? I'm I'm a Bontao, I'm a Bon City. I'm not from Shags. Mimi nimezaliwa hapa Nairobi, sijazaliwa kule Ushago. I'm Bon City. Nimezaliwa hapa Nairobi in early 50s. Katika hiyo miaka ya 50. But let me tell you. Lakini wacha nikwambie I have never smoked. Sijawahi futa sigara. I've never taken any alcoholic drinks. Hata sijakunywa pombe. But all the same I knew I was a sinner. Lakini hata hivyo nilijua kwamba mimi ni mwenye dhambi. Because I was taught in the Sunday school. Ni kwa sababu nilifunzwa katika shule ya Jumapili. And again my parents were teaching us on Sunday evening and Wednesday. Na pia wazazi pale nyumbani walikuwa wanatufunza kila Jumapili na Jumatano. And so I knew. Kwa hivyo nilijua and come 1971 when I was in form 1 I accepted the Lord Jesus. Na mwaka wa 71 nikiwa kidato cha kwanza nilimkubali Yesu. Salvation comes after understanding has been instilled in one's mind. Wokovu huingia wakati mtu amepata kuelewa zaidi. And so The scripture here says Na kwa hivyo maandiko hapa yanasema Train up the child. Mfunze mtoto. Even when he grows up. Hata wakati atakuwa mzee. He will not depart from that way. Hata potoka kwenye hiyo njia. Train up that child. Mfunze huyo mtoto. The way he or she should go. Mfunze jinsi anavyostahili kukua. I want to give an example. Ningependa kupeana mfano of passion fruit. Wa hili tunda la la passion. Eh tunda la passion mnaitaje <laughs> tunaita tu passion ama ni passion ni passion ni <laughs> wangapi wanajua tunda ya passion wengine wajui ah, ama mkono ndio imeenda wangapi wanajua tunda ya passion ah, tuna passion juice inatengenezwa na hiyo tunda now this vine mti huu it is a vine that creeps huwa unamea it grows as it creeps huwa unamea kwa kutambaa yes and if you want to grow it na kama ungependa kuipanda 
Look at the good soil. Tazama uwe na mchanga ulio na rotuba. And then make the areas that when it grows it will climb. Na pia utengeneze mahali ambapo inapokuwa itakuwa inatambaa. This fruit will climb and it will bear fruit. It will start bearing fruit after 6 months. Mti huu unapokuwa utatambaa na baada ya miezi 6 utaanza kuzaa matunda. And they are telling me if you did so well one acre can produce five tons. Na inasemekana ya kwamba ekari moja inaweza kuwa itoa tani tano. And you can continue farming passion fruit until 7 years. Unaweza endelea kuvuna huu mti hadi miaka 7. If you are not going to tender and to take care and to cause it to climb in a better way that it can bear fruit. Na kama hauta utunza huu mti na usaidie kukua ili ukaweze kuzaa zaidi. It will stay down there. Itaka pale chini. It will not bear fruit. Haita zaa matunda. It will be a disaster. Na itakuwa ni shida tu. But if you want the fruit to bear good fruit. Lakini kama unataka huu mti uzae matunda mazuri. It will bear. Utaza. And you'll get a bumper harvest. Na utapata kuvuna kwa wingi. My dear brothers and sisters. Ndugu na dada. We must do something to our children. Ni lazima tufanye kitu kwa watoto wetu. Leave alone cuddling your child. You pamper the child. Hey nani. Wacha kufanya hivyo. Hey. Sasa aya ya. Uyu mtoto na mkatazanga. You are not training a child. Kubembeleza mtoto siyo kumfunza mtoto. You are not training a child. If a child that has nine months knows that to bite the, the, the breast of the mother is wrong, kama mtoto wa miezi sita anajua ni vibaya kumuuma mama yake anaponyonya, about a child of five years, na mtoto wa miaka tano, a child should be taught on how to pray, huyo mtoto anafaa funzwe kuomba, how to bless the food, jinsi ya kubariki chakula, how to respect Visitors in the home. Jinsi ya kuwaheshimu wageni pale nyumbani. How to take care Jinsi, of the things that they are playing with. Jinsi ya kutunza vile vitu vyao vya kucheza. They should know where to keep them. Wanastahili wajue mahali pa kuziweka. They should not be everywhere, scattered everywhere. Hazistahili kuwa kila mahali. That is your work. Hiyo ni kazi yako. And when things are bad. Na wakati mambo ni mabaya. You will not start blaming others. Hautaanza kuwalaumu watu wengine. Because you never took the important moment of training your child. Ni kwa sababu wewe haukuchukua majukumu ya kumfunza mtoto wako. Right now we are in the church here. Wakati huu tukiwa hapa kanisani. It is chilly. Kuna baridi. And you have left your child. Na umeacha mtoto wako. But uh, it is too cold. Kwamba kuna baridi sana. Live around tomorrow. Wacha kesho. The children are going to school. Wanaenda ke shule. There is no child that you leave at home because it is chilly. Hakuna mtoto huwa naachwa nyumbani kwa sababu kuna baridi. Let us not deceive ourselves. Tusijidanganye. And my brothers and sisters. Ndugu na dada. What you plant. Kile unapanda. You will reap. Utavuna. Go back to your homes. Rudi pale nyumbani. Bring your family together. Kusanya jamii yako pamoja. Instill some knowledge in your family. Wafunze mambo fulani. Job prayed and fasted for his children. Ayubu aliomba kwa aliomba na akafunga kwa sababu ya watoto wake. I know with us we just want to pray and fast when we are sick or when we want God to bless your business. Wengine wetu tunaomba wakati tuko wagonjwa ama wakati tunataka Mungu wabariki biashara zetu. May the Lord bless us. Mungu atubariki. Discipline your child while there is hope. Fundisha watoto wako wakati bado kuna matumaini. Don't leave your child at home. Usiwaache pale nyumbani. No. La. Lock that home. Funga hiyo boma and walk along with your children. Na utembee na watoto wako. May the Lord richly bless us. Bwana 